choice. Because choice is a fundamental... Become a hard choice you'll face in the near future. Which choices are the right... Choice. Your common sense will tell you. When you believe you have a sense of autonomy, a sense of choice in what you're doing, you feel more self-motivated. Choice. I want to emphasize the power of choice. And perhaps there was a time when we wouldn't even talk about it, but we have to talk about that today. Because choice is a fundamental power of the human experience. Choice. Your common sense will tell you. When you believe you have a sense of autonomy, a sense of choice in what you're doing, you feel more self-motivated. B.F. Skinner taught us that too. In his book, Beyond Freedom and Dignity, way back in 1971, reading that book changed my life because I realized that I am controlled by consequences. But sometimes I don't feel controlled. When I'm working for a pleasant consequence, it feels good. It feels like I'm working to get something. When I'm working to avoid an aversive consequence, I feel controlled. That's called negative reinforcement. So here's a challenge, leaders. How do we get people to become success seekers rather than failure avoiders? First day of introductory psychology class, I teach two classes of 600 students. Maybe some of you have been in that class. And remember, the first day I say, how many are here to avoid failure? And 80% raise your hand. And I say, well, thanks for coming. I, I know you're motivated, but you're not happy campers. You probably told your friends, I got to go to class. It's a requirement. Not I get to go to class, it's an opportunity. You probably woke up to an alarm clock, not an opportunity clock. You have, you, we need to put choice as, a, as an authority, as a power that is so huge that if I ran the world, this is where you should say, that's a good idea, but if I ran the world, I would make studying the power of choice part of every school curriculum. That everyone should learn that the power of the choices you make have infinite consequences. From the littlest choice to something that is great, big, huge, and that here's the paradox. You have no idea what a little choice is or a big choice. You are, what we are used to doing is believing that a big choice is an obvious one. Buying a house, getting married, getting divorced. In fact, those are your small choices. The choices that, pay, that actually matter when it comes to your health, when it comes to healing, when it comes to positioning yourself, empowering yourself, are the tiny ones that you, th that are the choices I should say, that you think have the least power that you make in the privacy of your own company, that perhaps you think have the most, that are the most insignificant, I have found repeatedly, repeatedly Repeatedly are the most powerful choices of your life. The most powerful. That have the most powerful impact on your biology, on your inner, on your soul, on your um, sense of who you are, on your well-being, on your, on your whole life map. Now I'll tell you something else that these are the types of statements that are dicey to make because if someone said I want you to bring proof of this in a basket I couldn't do it but uh, if you listen with your heart and your gut and see if it doesn't settle well they're like good chicken soup so I'm going to take you through choices the kind of choices that if you came to me and said I don't feel well I don't feel well, and I, I have chronic chronicness. These are usually goals where also 
luck plays a minor role. For example, with our previous example with a startup that is worth over 10 million dollars by the end of next month, it's not that obvious which choices are the right one in order to achieve that goal. I mean, a right decision could be that you enroll in a coding bootcamp today and then next week you meet up with some brilliant Harvard students and then you get one of their ideas programmed and maybe you will have a startup that is worth 10 million dollars by the end of next month, but it's not obvious. And I don't even want to get into those choices right now. What I want to get into are the second types of choices we make all day long. These are the choices where it's pretty obvious to all of us, at least after a couple of minutes of thought, what the right choice is. For example, our other example with losing four pounds within a week uh, or within a month. It's pretty clear what we have to do. We need to exercise more and we need to eat more healthy food and overall probably less calories than we burn. So when we have to decide whether we take the stairs or the elevator, it's clear that we have to take the stairs. If we decide between eating a burger or a salad, it's pretty obvious that we eat the salad. It's that simple. And the same principle applies to numerous other daily choices. We should be kind to those around us. We shouldn't directly speak what pops into our head, but be aware of the consequences first. We shouldn't waste too much time in meaningless activities like binge watching and so on. Just imagine that for the past couple of years, you would have always chosen the right option when deciding between this and that. How great would your life be? How much could you have improved yourself? Think of a hard choice you'll face in the near future. It might be between two careers, artist and accountant, or places to live, the city or the country, or even between two people to marry. You could marry Betty, or you could marry Lolita. Or it might be a choice about whether to have children, to have an ailing parent move in with you, to raise your child in a religion that your partner lives by but leaves you cold, or whether to donate your life savings to charity. Chances are the hard choice you thought of was something big, something momentous, something that matters to you. Hard choices seem to be occasions for agonizing, hand wringing, the gnashing of teeth. But I think we've misunderstood hard choices and the role they play in our lives. Understanding hard choices uncovers a hidden power each of us possesses. What makes a choice hard is the way the alternatives relate. In an easy choice, one alternative is better than the other. In a hard choice, one alternative is better in some ways, the other alternative is better in other ways, and neither is better than the other overall. You agonize over whether to stay in your current job in the city or uproot your life for more challenging work in the country because staying is better in some ways, moving is better in others, and neither is better than the other overall. We shouldn't think that all hard choices are big. Let's say you're deciding what to have for breakfast. You could have high fiber brand cereal or a chocolate donut. Suppose what matters in the choice is tastiness and healthfulness. The cereal is better for you. The donut tastes way better, but neither is better than the other overall, a hard choice. Realizing that small choices can also be hard may make big hard choices seem less intractable. 